All right, all right, all right. Everybody on your feet. Hold your Bibles up one last time. Here we go. Here we go. Say, this is my Bible. I am who it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. Tonight, I'll be taught the Word of God. I boldly confess. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I'll never be the same. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. How many of you guys were here last week? Yeah. Last week, we started a series called Lessons Along the Yellow Brick Road. Tonight, we're going to finish that series. We're going to double up tonight. We're going to deal with the tin man. Look at your neighbor say the tin man and the cowardly lion. How many of you guys have seen The Wizard of Oz? That's such a cool movie. It really is. It really, really is a cool movie. Guys, what I want to talk to you tonight, here we go. What I want to talk to you about tonight is heart. Look at your neighbor and say heart. What? Neighbor, look back and say courage. courage. Those are the two things we're going to hit tonight. In Acts, uh, in our, our base verse while you're turning there is going to be Acts chapter 16, verse 25. Now, here's what I want you guys to understand. That you discover your theology, what's in your heart. You discover what's in your heart at midnight. Until then, it's all theory. When midnight comes, you discover the difference between theory and reality. This is what we're going to talk about tonight. When it's midnight in your life, when you're really going through the toughest thing that you've ever gone through, when, when life is not peaches, when life is not like a, a walk in the garden, when life is tough, that's when you discover what you believe. That's, what, that's when you discover your theology. Your theology is basically your study of God. Theo meaning God. Ology meaning some big fancy science word. The Oklahoma translation is, theology is what you believe, what's in your heart, what you stand for, okay? You discover what you stand for. You discover what's in your heart at midnight. Not when everything's going great. When everything's going great, what you think you believe, what you say you believe, it's just theory because you've never put it to the test. Because it's easy to say, God will supply all my needs when your mommy and daddy's loaded and you're driving like a Corvette or something. You know what I'm saying? When I was in, you guys are like, no, I have no clue. Um, when I was in high school, there was this girl in one of my classes, and she was like, you know, she was the ditzy cheerleader. How many of you guys have the ditzy cheerleaders in your, uh, um, how many of you are cheerleaders? Yeah? Yeah. I don't take it back. Um, she had, she was, she was, I mean, she was the typical kind of ditzy cheerleader. And she, her parents were loaded. I think her parents were doctors or something like that. And I'll never forget, I remember coming in. Um, it was the week after the weekend of her 16th birthday party, okay? So she was getting a new car. <clears throat> her mommy and daddy bought her a Corvette for her first car. A Corvette. Lipstick red Corvette. And she was crying because her daddy didn't give her his old Porsche. Okay? She wrecked that car three times before school was out. Three times. She literally drove, she was driving down a straight road. She literally drove over two lanes, hopped a curve, and went into a ditch. When the speed limit's only like 30 miles an hour on this road. Um, so, yeah, I think she was a little mental. But, you know, when, when you live in a life like that and everything's going good and the girl you want to date's dating you and the guy you want to date's dating you and everything's fine, what you think you believe about God and him supplying your needs and meeting your needs, it's just theory. Theory is something that hasn't been proved, okay? Theory is something that hasn't been proved. When midnight comes, when hard times come, you, go, you discover the difference between theory and reality. In 2 Corinthians 11, uh, verses 23 through 27, Paul lists some of the hardships that he went through. You know, Paul was, is an awesome dude, and, and, and he went through all sorts of stuff. And he wrote so much of the New Testament. He's such a, you know, father of our faith, and we, we read all of his things to learn how to live this life and all that. But Paul went through some tough stuff. We're going to put it up on the screen up here. <clears throat> In 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 to 27, Are they servants of Christ? I can go them one better. I can't believe I'm saying these things. It's crazy to talk this way. But I started, and I'm going to finish. I've worked much harder, been jailed more often, beaten up more times than I can count. 
and at death's door, time after time, I've been flogged five times with the Jews, 39 lashes, beaten by Roman rods three times, pummeled with rocks once, I've been shipwrecked three times, I've been immersed in the open sea for a night and a day, in hard traveling year in and year out, I've had to ford rivers, fend off robbers, struggle with friends, struggle with foes. I've been at risk in the city, at risk in the country, endangered by desert sun and sea storm, and betrayed by those I thought were my brothers. I've known drudgery and hard labor, many a long and lonely night without sleep, many a missed meal, blasted by the cold, naked to the weather. This is Paul's life since he came to know Christ. Since he came to know Christ. You see, before Paul came to know Christ, Paul was like in the best schools. Like he was one of the popular people. Like he, everybody, everybody knew who Paul was. And he was being trained by the best teachers. And he was going to have some money. He was going to have some status. He was going to have some power. And he was going to have some women. That was Paul's life. And then he gets saved. And now he's shipwrecked and beaten and, and robbed and everything else. Sounds like an awesome Christian life, right? Woohoo! Some of you are like, where's the exit? Okay? But this is what Paul knew. This is what Paul knew. Paul knew what he believed. So let me ask you a question. What do you do when you've been arrested, beaten, imprisoned, placed under guard with your feet bound in stocks for nothing more than preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ? The answer is, it all depends on your theology, which you generally don't discover until midnight. At that point, you can't go over to, to your library. You know, when you're in a tough time and things are going, you can't go to your library. You can't go and say, okay, okay, um, now I need to really catch up on, on what Jesus says about this stuff. And I really need to catch up and I need to read a bunch and watch a bunch of things because I need, to, I need to know. You don't have time when you're in the midst of something to figure out what you believe. You don't figure out what you believe at midnight. You don't, you don't come to what you believe at midnight. You figure out what you believe at midnight. Does that make sense to you guys? You see what I'm saying? <clears throat> you discover what's in your heart. At that point, you can't walk over to the library to pull out some book on theology, and you can't rifle through that big stack of notes from your Greek class. Believe me, I've had Greek classes to see what it says to do once you've been arrested. You don't have access to a computer, so you can't send an email or update Facebook or Twitter. Paul couldn't do any of this stuff. In that lonely moment, he discovered his theology he discovered what, he, what his theory was. You find out what's real and what's purely theory. Major Ian Thomas. Okay, now Ian Thomas was the founder of Torchbearers International, which is this great kind of missionary um, uh, organization. He mentioned a saying that was fundamental to his understanding of Jesus and of this Christian life. Because, you know, a lot of us, and I, and I told you this before, it, it bothers me so much when I hear people counsel people at the altar saying, your life's going to be so much better. And, and, yeah. No, it's not. All right? It's not. It's worth it, but it's not going to be easier. But this is what he says. Go where you're sent. Stay where you're put. And give what you got. Let me say that again. Go where you're sent. Stay where you're put and give what you've got. See, the wisdom of that advice of what he says, this, this really struck a chord in me. And I thought about it, and as I thought about it, I began to consider what great biblical principles it represents. It throws light on the darkness of that prison cell in Philippi where Paul and Silas were singing and praying at midnight. And in, in the book of Acts in chapter 16, and, and I'll tell you what, we won't go there, but I'll just give you the story. Paul and Silas have been preaching the gospel. You guys know this is one of my favorite stories. They're bound in stocks. The stocks are lifted up. It's really painful. And uh, they're sitting probably more than likely, according to most theologians, they're probably sitting in raw sewage, okay? And it's pitch black, all right? And it says about midnight, Paul and Silas, they start singing and praising hymns to God, okay? I would not be singing and praising hymns to God. I would be holding my nose and throwing up, you know, probably in that order multiple times. Um, but that's just me. Um, point one, go where you're sent. You know, one of my favorite scenes in... The Wizard of Oz is when Dorothy is, she's been captured by the Wicked Witch. And the Tin Man, the Scarecrow, and the Cowardly Lion, they're all sitting there. And, you know, they're, they're trying to get up enough courage. And they're trying to go. And they're trying to rescue Dorothy. And they're like, yeah, we're going to do it. And, of course, the Cowardly Lion hasn't gotten his courage yet. And um, hiding behind rocks outside the Witch's Castle, the Lion allows fear to stifle his power and nearly retreats when Dorothy, Dorothy desperately needs his help. This is what the Cowardly Lion says. All right, I'll go in there for Dorothy. 
Wicked witch or no wicked witch, guards or no guards, I'll tear them apart. I may not come out alive, but I'm going in there. There's only one thing I want you fellows to do. And the tin man and the scarecrow look at the carry line and say, what? And he goes, talk me out of it. You know, and I think so many times that's, that's, I think so many times that's how we approach the Christian life, guys. You know, we get saved and we know that God has done something in our lives. We know God has touched us. We know God has moved. And then we start to discover how hard this life can be. 